Well, you saw a look there, the active weather around the globe in force of nature, but we have active weather right here at home. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Chrissy Van in for Jacqueline Whittle, and we're looking at two systems. We do have a wet BC coast, snow moving into Alberta, and then we're getting all set for the nor'easter that will be impacting Atlantic Canada starting tomorrow. Let's start with the Alberta story, and this is a look ahead. Your Wednesday into Friday, you can see Edmonton could be getting 20 centimeters of snow. If you're traveling west of Calgary, that's where things are going to get really tricky. You can see heavier amounts in the higher elevations, 30 plus centimeters. We, of course, will be following that story. In addition to that, your temperatures are going to be going way down. We'll talk more about that in a moment. In addition, later in the show, I want to let you know Margot Morin will be joining us. Unfortunately, she had a little bit of a spill before her first live hit. My fence actually did not survive these winds yesterday. And today, well, you can see winds have de diminished somewhat in southern Ontario. You're still in for a gusty day as we continue through the day into the evening hours, though you'll continue to see those winds just diminish even further, which is great news because after dealing with 102 kilometer per hour winds in Kitchener, there's plenty of damage. We'll be joining Mike Arsenault later, who will share some of his finds this morning. Now in the light, same St. Catharines, 102 kilometers per hour. It was howling. I'm sure there are many tired people relying on a lot of coffee to get through the day today because of those howling winds. Winds also howling if you're traveling along the St. Lawrence. You can see a wind warning in place as well for the northeastern peninsula of Newfoundland getting into those high wind gusts. And with the higher winds and higher tide, we do have the concern a storm surge warning is in place. Uh, so you could be dealing with some erosion along the shoreline. Just be careful if you're traveling within that stretch. Then the big story for the east, that is the nor'easter. So Wednesday morning, we're going to see this push in. For southern Nova Scotia, will mainly be a rain event, but for northern Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, your Wednesday, that's looking like a snow event where we could see periods of freezing rain, and in addition to that, ice pellets at times. But this is a look at the rainfall totals. You can see 20 to 45 millimeters. This becomes a Newfoundland story on Thursday. And again, we are looking at some significant snowfall. We'll dive into more details on that coming up with your Stormwatch coverage. Well, you saw the active weather there in the force of nature. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Chrissy Van and for Jacqueline Whittle, and we're talking the active weather here at home. We're keeping our eyes on the nor'easter that's going to be moving into Atlantic Canada tomorrow, and then quite stormy conditions for the west, really through the BC coast, higher elevation, seeing snow, and then into Alberta, we're going to be looking at some multiple snow events. So you can see Wednesday in through Friday, if you're traveling west of Calgary, some significant accumulations if you're heading through the mountains. Be very careful if you do have any travel plans. But we join Margo Morin now live. And Margo, I have to ask, I know you had a bit of a spill there. Are you all right? Thanks so much for that, Margo. And that's exactly that. When we get into these type of conditions, it's not just dangerous on the roads for pedestrians as well. Really slippery. This is the cold, though. We're going to have Arctic high pressure moving in late week, and that is going to make temperatures through Alberta, the prairies just take a massive nosedive, getting into the negative double digits and then adding a wind chill into that. This is a look at what we're seeing today. So you can see the snow through Edmonton, southern Saskatchewan as well, two to five centimeters. But as mentioned, that's really the appetizer in regards to the systems that we'll be seeing moving through. City of Calgary, Here's what I mean about your temperatures. Yes, you're dealing with the snow, but minus two Thursday, minus 11 Friday, feeling like minus 19. And you can see, unfortunately, those temperatures here to stay for a while. Edmonton, same deal, going from minus nine to minus 17 to end your week, feeling like minus 25. All the layers are going to be required. In through British Columbia, we're looking at extended periods of rain through this week, and there is a rainfall warning issued for Abbotsford. So if you're traveling east of Metro Vancouver, you'll be dealing with that. Then we head to Ontario, where, of course, the winds were a massive story yesterday. Today, we're still going to be seeing gusty, breezy conditions. But as we progress through the evening, those winds really start to diminish. I know many of you still without power added to that the cleanup efforts. I myself lost a fence in the matter. Into Atlantic Canada, where we do have some wind warnings as well. You can see along the St. Lawrence and through the northeastern peninsula of New Brunswick, and or Newfoundland rather. And to add to that, a storm surge warning with the higher tides and high winds. Coming up, we'll be covering more details in the nor'easter that will be arriving tomorrow, impacting the Maritimes moving into Newfoundland for Thursday.
Thanks so much for that force of nature, Natalie. And thank you so much for joining me. I'm Chrissy Van in for Jacqueline Whittle. And yes, we have some big systems to talk about. Coming up, we'll talk about the nor'easter that is making its way into Atlantic Canada for tomorrow. As well, though, we have a messy system that's making its way into Alberta. So let's take a look back here at Edmonton, where you were dealing with nice, clear, sunny conditions. Thanks for that, Margot. And I'm really glad that you mentioned if you are traveling, of course, quite dangerous, but adding to that to dress for the weather and the conditions, because if you do get stuck, it's incredibly important. Even if you're running to the store, have the parka in the back, because if you get stuck in these conditions of feeling like minus 25, minus 27, like the city of Edmonton will be feeling later this week, it's not going to be a good situation for you. As for British Columbia, you are seeing rain along the coast over the next couple of days, higher elevations getting into the snow, but areas like Abbotsford seeing that significant rainfall, thus Environment Canada has issued a rainfall warning. Thanks so much for that, Natalie. Yes, active weather and force of nature, but active weather right here as well. I'm Chrissy Van in for Jacqueline Whittle. And as you can see, we have this nor'easter that's making its way into the Maritimes for your Wednesday. And then to the west, it's soggy along the BC coast. But in Alberta, we do have some significant snowfall on the way. In addition, temperatures will be taking a dive. And that has me wondering, Margot Morin, what do you prefer, the extreme cold or the snow? <laughs> Thanks for that, Margo. Great advice, especially if you did have those travel plans, because as you can see, anywhere west of Calgary, really getting into that heavy snow. But of course, not the only story for Alberta. We have the extreme cold, and that's going to be arriving late week and impacting Alberta right through Saskatchewan and Manitoba. In fact, in some regions of Manitoba, an extreme cold warning has been issued by Environment Canada. As for what you're seeing today, the appetizer, a couple centimeters through Edmonton, southern Saskatchewan as well, certain areas is getting into that two to five centimeter mark. These are the temperatures that you can see really dive for late week by Friday. Calgary minus 11, feeling like minus 19. Edmonton, you're joining the fun as well, unfortunately. Minus 17, feeling like minus 25. Into BC, where we are looking at the wet weather for the coast, higher elevations getting into snow, but you can see Abbotsford, so if you're east of Metro Vancouver, getting into those higher rainfall totals, which has prompted a rainfall warning. Over to Ontario, where, of course, Winds were the massive story yesterday with gusts exceeding 100 kilometers per hour for many areas in southern Ontario. Those winds diminished through the day today. We do have snow squall watches and warnings in effect, though, along the shores of Lake Huron and heading in through Georgian Bay. Heading into the Maritimes, you can see along the St. Lawrence River Valley, we do have wind warnings in place. Northeastern Newfoundland also under that wind warning. More details on the Nor'easter coming up. Thanks for that, Natalie. Coming up, we will talk the nor'easter, but first, here's what's to come for Alberta. You can see west of Calgary, so in through the mountain passes, some significant accumulations, and that'll be Wednesday through Friday morning. Southern Saskatchewan tapping into it right now as well. And we're going to be joining Margo Morin because, Margo, you're actually getting the appetizer storm before the main event. <laughs> It's none too nice. I'm not a big fan of the cold, but you can watch it in action here. Thank you, Margo. Uh, yes, we're seeing that big flood, Arctic high pressure, and that's where the purples come in. And you can see on the legend that's negative 15 and below before the wind chill is even a factor. The wind chill is going to make it feel much worse. But let's look at some morning temperatures. You can see along the BC coast getting into the rain, but Nanaimo 8 degrees, so not so bad as we make our way in through the coast, though. So east of Metro Vancouver, we do have a rainfall warning in place where areas like Abbotsford, could see 70 plus millimeters of rain. We joined Mike Arsenault though because he was actually looking at the aftermath of the Ontario wind story. Thanks Mike. The good news is that the winds will be diminishing by this evening. I myself lost a fence in this and you can see those gusts exceeding 100 kilometers per hour so no surprise as to why. Along the St. Lawrence River Valley northeastern peninsula of Newfoundland wind warnings in place today. Storm surge warnings as well because of that. Then the nor'easter moves in for tomorrow bringing rain through the Maritimes and that becomes a story for Newfoundland on Thursday. <laughs> That was a look around the globe in your force of nature. Thanks for joining me. I'm Chrissy Van in for Jacqueline Whittle. Coming up, we'll talk about those wicked winds that impacted Ontario as well as the Nor'easter heading to Atlantic Canada. But first, in through the prairies, you can see Wednesday through Friday, that's going to be a snowmaker, particularly for Alberta, west of Calgary, in through the mountain passes. Travel could be quite treacherous. And in addition, temperatures, Margo, are going to be taking quite the dive. Thanks. Well, there you see it. Margot was literally frozen 
And I don't blame her because look what's coming our way as we head through the morning hours. You can see this Arctic high pressure making its way down and we get into the purples. If you look at the legend there, minus 15 is where the purple starts. And then you add to that the wind chill and it equals this for Edmonton by Friday, minus 17, feeling like minus 25 for Calgary. Temperatures sinking as well. And you can see Saturday, yes, you get sunshine, but minus 15 feeling like minus 19. And those are the daytime temperatures, not even the overnight lows. As for British British Columbia, that's where we are seeing rain for the coast in through the BC interior, looking at snow. But speaking of that rain through the Fraser Valley, we could be looking at significant rainfall. Abbotsford under a rainfall warning where you could see 70 plus millimeters. For Ontario, the story yesterday were the extreme winds. And we're going to catch up right now with Mike Arsenault, who was dealing with the aftermath. Thanks, Mike. And of course, through southern Ontario, there was widespread damage and adding to that multiple power outages. I myself lost a fence. So I'm quite pleased to know that through the day today, you're going to find those winds diminish. So a gusty start, but those will quiet down. Different story as we make our travels into Atlantic Canada, where we do have a wind warning. You can see along the St. Lawrence River Valley, northeastern peninsula of Newfoundland as well, some very strong wind gusts. And that also causes the concern for storm surge. And that is why you can see a storm surge warning has been issued. Then the nor'easter. So what is going to happen? Well, tomorrow we're going to see this large moisture laden system move into the Maritimes. That's going to be bringing rain for the southern coast of Nova Scotia. You can see heaviest areas 20 to 45 millimeters. Heading into Thursday, that rain pushes in through the Avalon Peninsula for Newfoundland. Snow is going to be the story as well, where things are much colder. So for northern New Brunswick, areas like Moncton could be seeing 20 plus centimeters of snow. That snow becomes the Thursday story for Newfoundland. So Maritimes on Wednesday, buckle up for rain and snow and then Newfoundland, you'll be seeing all of that come your Thursday. We're looking at active weather, of course, the nor'easter making its way into Atlantic Canada tomorrow. But first, what's in store for Alberta? And you can see some significant snowfall through Edmonton, Calgary, west of Calgary. If you're traveling through the mountain passes, that could be quite difficult. And Margo, I know you're quite cold already, but things are going to be getting even colder late week. Absolutely, Margo. Love that advice. And of course, I know the holiday season makes us more giving, but even more so when you are seeing temperatures like this, because look at this Arctic high, the purples come down and look at the legend. Minus 15 is where the purples start. And these are daytime highs we're talking. For Edmonton, you can see things really start to dip down by your Friday. Minus 17, feeling like minus 25. Calgary as well gets into that deep frigid chill. Minus 11 by Friday, feeling like minus 19. And again, that's your daytime high for the day. So none too fun. We look at BC where along the coast we're dealing with rain heavy through Abbotsford could be seeing upwards of 70 millimeters. But of course for Ontario, the story has been the wind and that is where we join Mike Arsenault. Thanks for that, Mike. And yes, many people were without power. I myself lost a fence. So happy to see this. The wind's diminishing as we continue through the evening hours. So it's going to continue to get a little bit more on that calm side. Different story as we travel into Atlantic Canada. We do have wind warnings in place along the St. Lawrence River Valley and through the northeastern peninsula of Newfoundland. And as a result, we're looking at storm surge warnings as well due to the higher tide. The nor'easter making its way along the eastern seaboard. That's going to be moving into the Maritime times for your Wednesday morning and then hanging around into Thursday. So it's going to be a rain event for southern Nova Scotia, 20 to 45 millimeters through Wednesday, and that moves into Newfoundland for your Thursday. The snow for the colder stretches, so in through New Brunswick, areas like Moncton could be looking at 20 plus centimeters, and that moves into Newfoundland for your Thursday. Well, you saw the active weather there in your force of nature, but we have active weather right here at home. Thanks for joining me. I'm Chrissy Van in for Jacqueline Woodall. And what you're seeing through today in Edmonton, well, that's just the appetizer, the big system moving in later this week. And for more details, we join our reporter, Deb Medichka. Thanks so much for that, Deb. And yes, exactly that. Today, just a little bit of a system moving through, but because of upsloping as we head through tomorrow into Thursday, that's when we're going to see that more significant snowfall event. How much are we talking? Well, as Deb was mentioning, for Edmonton and Calgary could be looking at that 20 centimeter mark, but west of Calgary is where travel could be tricky in those mountain passes on the way for you. As you can see right along the south and central coast, seeing some significant amounts, particularly through the Fraser Valley where you could be looking at 60 millimeters. And then as we head through the higher elevations, that's where we're talking snow. So in that darker blue, 30 plus centimeters, which could make tricky travels. Travels were tricky in Ontario as well due to the high winds yesterday, and it caused quite a bit of damage. We join Rachel Schutzen. 
Thanks for that, Rachel. I myself lost a bit of a fence in the winds yesterday as well. What we're dealing with today, still a little bit on the breezy side. Those winds diminishing as we head through the day, although along the shores of Huron, Georgian Bay, that's where we are looking at getting some snow squalls. And Environment Canada has issued some snow squall watches and warnings. As you head up through the Nickel Belt, you're looking at 5 to 10 centimeters through Wednesday morning. As well across the country, we're keeping our eyes on the nor'easter. We'll have more details on that coming up. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Chrissy Van in for Jacqueline Whittle. And here at the Weather Network, we're watching two weather makers this week. Of course, we have the wet weather along the BC coast. Heading in through the BC interior in Alberta, we're talking snow. But the big story for Atlantic Canada is our nor'easter. We take a live look now. Things are really going to be changing as we head through tomorrow into Thursday. This is the system here moving up the eastern seaboard. We'll be arriving for the Maritimes tomorrow, bringing rain and snow. What you see depends on where you are and how your temperature is faring. You can see along the southern coast of Nova Scotia, 20 to 45 millimeters. That's a Wednesday story, and then it starts to push into Newfoundland. You can see the Avalon Peninsula getting into that 20 to 30 millimeters of rain through Thursday. Thursday as well to the north, you can see getting the snow 20 plus centimeters. And Wednesday for the Maritimes, it's through northern Nova Scotia and southern New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island. That's what you're going to be dealing with. Snow where you could see a mix of ice pellets at time as well as freezing rain. For travelers, travelers as we progress through the evening and quite a bit of damage as well. Kitchener, you saw 44 millimeters, but of course you were dealing with lake effect snow previous to that. And that unfortunately contributed to the messy conditions you were dealing with. Added to that, 102 kilometer per hour wind gusts in Kitchener. And that's exactly where we join Mike Arsenault. Thanks for that, Mike. And that's exactly right. There were power outages. I myself lost a chunk of fence. Didn't really like that part of it anyways. We're also dealing with snow in Ontario. We have snow squall watches and warnings issued by Environment Canada. You can see Perry Sound, you're at it again. Sudbury in the warned area as well. And as we've learned in the last couple of weeks, as those squalls move through, visibility can be greatly reduced over a short span of time. So be careful if you have any travel plans. As for temperatures this afternoon, well, Toronto, three degrees. So a little bit below seasonal, certainly not too frigid. Thank you for sending that in. And through Wednesday, morning yes more snow on the way so areas just north of Sudbury looking at that five to ten centimeter mark and then along Huron shores and Georgian Bay shores that's where you're looking at around less than five temperatures are going to be a really big story as we travel right across the country this week you see all this purple well look at what that represents on the map that purple starts at minus 15 and for many of you your highs through the prairies, for example, are going to be in the negative double digits. And that's the high for the day. The lows getting into the minus 20s, the minus 30s. So be sure to have all the gear ready. And if you are traveling, make sure you're dressed in warm clothing in case you get stranded. Thanks so much, Mike. Yes, a widespread area impacted. I myself lost a fence yesterday. Thanks for joining me. I'm Chrissy Van in for Jacqueline Whittle. Today we are looking at snow along the shores of Huron, Georgian Bay. Snow squall watches and warnings have been issued by Environment Canada. And as you know, areas like Perry Sound, for example, that has been dealing with them. Conditions can change quite rapidly out in the road, so do be careful. Hope you enjoyed the mild temperatures at the end of this weekend and Monday because, as you can see, we have bid those farewell and our high pressure moving in and those purples that you're seeing up near Geraldton, well, that starts at minus 15. So none too nice if you're not a big fan of the frigid cold. Looking through Wednesday, the snowfall forecast, well, along the Huron Georgian Bay shores around five centimeters up north of the Nickel Belt, five to 10 centimeters possible. And of course, we are seeing active weather out to the west as well. A moisture-laden system is on the way. It's causing rain for the coast of B.C. into the B.C. interior, higher elevations getting into snow. And for Alberta, I know those of you in Edmonton had a slippery commute, but the commute could get more complicated as we head into the week. Wednesday through Friday, the snow starts to fall. Edmonton and Calgary looking at 10 to 20 centimeters, which I know for you, not too earth-shattering. But if you're traveling west of Calgary into these mountain passes, that's where we're looking at 30-plus centimeters. So it can definitely really complicate things if you have travel plans. Perhaps you want to 
bump up those travel plans or hold them off depending on what you had on the go. Looking across the country for your Wednesday though, you can see very cold air starts to funnel in through the prairies. It continues to get colder through the week and we watch the nor'easter slide up into Atlantic Canada. That's going to be bringing rain to southern Nova Scotia, snow to the north and then through southern New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island as well, tapping into that snow. Then we're looking at frigid temperatures arriving for the prairies on Thursday. Thanks for that, Nate, and a very happy birthday to you. Thanks for joining me. I'm Chrissy Van in for Jacqueline Whittle. And yes, this is the big moisture laden system arriving in the Maritimes tomorrow. So let's see how much rain Southern Nova Scotia is looking at. Areas like Halifax looking at 20 to 45 millimeters of rain through Wednesday. This becomes a Thursday story for the Avalon Peninsula. You could be looking at 20 to 30 millimeters. Areas seeing snow like Northern Nova Scotia, Southern New Brunswick, Moncton, you could be looking at 20 plus centimeters. And again, this becomes a Newfoundland story for northern Newfoundland. Some areas could be looking at 20 plus centimeters as well. So good old snow and rain. We travel to Windy Hamilton, though. Winds that actually took down part of my fence yesterday. And you can see in quite a few areas, it was gusting around 100 kilometers per hour. We join Rachel Schutzen, who is checking out some of the damage. Thanks for that, Rachel. Yes, not a good situation. Lots of people were out without power, trees down, and well, you saw there the evidence of what wind can do. Snow makes a mess as well of things, and you can see we have snow squall watches and warnings in place along the shores of Huron, Georgian Bay. Just keep in mind, I know you've been dealing with these squalls coming through over the last few weeks. It can really change things on the roads in a very short period of time. You can see north of the Nickel Belt, 5 to 10 centimeters, otherwise a general less than 5 through Wednesday morning. Shot looks cold just staring at it. Well, what you saw today in southern Saskatchewan, two to five centimeters overall, so it could have made the morning travels a little bit complicated. As for Edmonton, you saw some snow as well, but that was really just the appetizer. We're looking at low to moderate snow amounts over the next couple of days. If you're traveling west of Calgary through the mountain passes, that's where we could be looking at 30 plus centimeters. So be very careful if you have travel plans. For Calgary and Edmonton itself, you could be looking at 10 to 20 centimeters, and that's Wednesday through Thursday into Friday. Not the only story though for the prairies in Alberta, your temperatures are going way down as we head through the rest of the week. This Arctic high moving in, the purples that you're seeing move in, well look at the legend, they start at minus 15. And for many of you, those negative double digits are your highs and quite frigid with negative 20s, negative 30s when you add in the wind chill. So be sure to be bundled up blown over in the high winds. Thanks for joining me on Chrissy Van in for Jacqueline Whittle. Luckily, those winds have diminished, but we do have frigid temperatures on the way and some snow. Through today, we're looking at two to five centimeters for southern Saskatchewan. Edmonton, you saw snow disrupt the morning commute, but more on the way. First, though, we join reporter Deb Midiechka. Thanks so much for that, Deb. And this is the moisture-laden system. You can see rain along the B.C. coast as well. In through the interior, we're looking at snow. But for Alberta, that Wednesday through Thursday is where things are going to get quite messy. And then, yes, high pressure comes in place, but temperatures go way down. This is a look at your Wednesday through Friday. So Edmonton, Calgary, looking at 10 to 20 centimeters. But as Deb mentioned there, if you're traveling in through the mountains, that's where travels could be particularly tricky. West of Calgary, 30-plus centimeters possible. So a bit of a nasty situation for you. As well, if you're traveling in through the BC interior, we're looking at 15 to 30 plus centimeters of snow. Sending the video in, of course, we know with the return of the snow, people returning to the slopes, that's when we start to see these avalanche risks. And we do have a high risk in through South Columbia. Other areas looking like a considerable risk, of course, with all this moisture making its arrival. As for the south and central coast, it's coming as rain. There's a rainfall warning for Abbotsford where you could be looking at 70 plus millimeters through your Wednesday. So a very soggy system. And then we're talking winds, snow and rain in Atlantic Canada with the arrival of a nor'easter. And for more, we send it out to Nathan Coleman. Thanks, Nate. It's always the way every storm you see someone pulled over just trying to put more washer fluid in. So make sure to have it on board. In through southern Nova Scotia, though, a rain event, 20 to 45 millimeters becomes a Thursday story for Newfoundland, Newfoundland in the Avalon Peninsula. And then snow for northern Nova Scotia, southern New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, where areas like Moncton could see 20 plus centimeters. Of course, for Ontario, the big story has been the winds. We join Mike Arsenault now.
Thanks for that, Mike. And I myself lost a little bit of fence in the windstorm. I know many of people were without power and really widespread damage throughout southern Ontario with gusts exceeding 100 kilometers per hour in some places, no doubt as to why. We return to the snow, though. Snow squall watches and warnings in place along the shores of Huron and Georgian Bay. We still have those relatively warmer waters in Huron. Cold air aloft, and that's what's generating these squalls. Overall, north of the Nickel Belt, looking at 5 to 10 centimeters. Otherwise, a less than 5, but as we know with these squalls, can make a sticky situation on the roads in a very short period of time. Now, coming up, we're going to dive a little deeper into our two systems impacting Alberta, as well as the Nor'easter making its way into Atlantic Canada. Thanks so much for that, Deb. And yes, that's how Calgary, you started the day for Edmonton, a different story. What you saw this morning that made the roads quite slippery, that is the storm appetizer, if you will. Thanks for joining me. I'm Chrissy Van in for Jacqueline Whittle. In through southern Saskatchewan today, we'll also be dealing with around two to five centimeters, but that's just the sneak peek for what's to come. Wednesday into Friday, we're looking at some heavier snow totals for Edmonton and Calgary, 10 to 20 centimeters. If you're traveling west of Calgary through the mountain passes, that's where we could be looking at 30 plus centimeters of snow. How are you feeling about that? Well, even tweets over the initial snowfall today. Amanda writes, the more the snow falls, the more I'm so glad to be in Edmonton. Hashtag, can you feel the sarcasm? Another tweet here, beautiful snowy day in Edmonton. All you see is brake lights because everyone is driving so slow. Of course, driving slow, a key to your safety in the wintry conditions. But the snow isn't the only story for Stormwatch. We're going to have frigid temperatures moving in due to an Arctic high. And for Calgary, as we head in through late week, we're going to have negative double digits is what it's going to be feeling like. And in addition to that is your high for the day. Edmonton as well, minus 17, feeling like minus 25 by the time we roll into your late week. We'll take a look at Halifax for Monday and you can see getting into the rainfall. But for you, that was also just the appetizer. Unfortunately, we're keeping a close eye on a nor'easter that's making its way up the coast right now. It's going to bring rain to the southern Nova Scotia. 20 to 45 millimeters becomes a Thursday story for Newfoundland. And then the snow is going to be for northern Nova Scotia, southern New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island. Through Wednesday, some areas could see 20 plus centimeters shifts into Newfoundland for Thursday, where you can see some areas getting into 20 plus centimeters for areas like St. John's, the Avalon Peninsula, looking at mainly a rain event but still not so nice if you're not a big fan of the wet weather and the snow. Uh, we have a tweet here from Nathan Coleman. He'll be live on the scene getting us through the nor'easter. And I do want to add with all this wintry talk of weather, our winter outlook, if you missed it, it's available at theweathernetwork.com.